The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Filling in for Tommy O'Brien. He will be back with us tomorrow morning. I hope you all had a good weekend. I had a good weekend. A lot of stuff going on here. It's getting a little bit cooler uh, in Florida. I think we're about like 66 this morning. Uh, but it's that kind of humid, windy cold. So not very pleasant. Uh, let's take a look at what we're doing right now. We're at 9.06 a.m. Market opens in a little bit. We have the ES Mini kind of flat. All of our futures are flat, essentially, right? And we can talk a little bit about what happened. Obviously, uh, everything that went on with OpenAI this weekend was insane. Microsoft has gone up uh, quite a bit. Uh, they've actually brought Sam Altman on to Microsoft after he was ousted uh, from OpenAI. We'll talk a little bit about that going forward. We have the Russell trading at 1806.40. The futures there at 0.22% in the green. NQ, 0.11. Dow futures up 0.03. We're all flat again. The gold contract, we have a little bit of a divergence going on currently. Let me get rid of this thing. Uh, we have the dollar trading about 103.61, so we're still moving lower. Looking for that 99 level in the dollar. Uh, but we also have gold and silver going down as well. So we'll kind of see throughout the day and throughout this week if we get any change in that. And uh, we kind of resume the general inverse correlation that they have. Um, but as it stands now, pre-market, we are trading down in uh, the two big metals. Take a look at the copper contract, trading at 375, again flat here. Now we're seeing light sweet crude creep up a little bit. Again, we'll talk some more about that as the show goes on. Uh, you have OPEC kind of warning that with the Gaza conflict, if it persists, uh, they'll see higher prices and uh, output will be cut. Some interesting news, we're speaking about it uh, last week, but Venezuela, if they actually engage in a truly democratic election, and this is from uh, the, the West, Western leaders essentially, um, that the uh, embargo will be lifted on them. And they've made some new deals for drilling off of uh, other countries around them, which will be huge. Uh, so if we can get them, uh, if we can get that embargo lifted, it will be a little bit cheaper. Of course, we're going into winter as well. And uh, this might increase energy prices as well. I think natural gas is pretty low today um, anyway. So take a look here. The Brent crude is at 82.33. Tesla trading flat again, we're at 235.45. Uh, that has been on a wild move recently. Um, you have some issues with Elon Musk in uh, on, on X, formerly known as Twitter. He's been saying some things that people uh, don't agree with. And uh, whether you like it or not, if you, if you hold Tesla, really his public perception and kind of what he does does drive price sometimes, right? Now, this usually just results in kind of, in what, from what I've analyzed, like what I've noticed with the patterns, is that he says something, people don't like it, and it goes down a little bit, uh, but then it comes right back up. And short sellers uh, always get kind of screwed uh, on Tesla, to be honest. We're trading right now at 235.50. Uh, had a lot of volume on this gap down here on October 19th, and it continued to head a little bit lower. And now we're moving up, and the highest it's been uh, last week was 247.21, roughly. And again, we're trading at 235.50. Uh, again, everything's flat. I think we're all waiting for NVIDIA. We'll take a look at them a little bit going forward. Steel Dynamics trading at 110.93. I think that's making uh, kind of a new bottom. We'll see. Uh, but this is some pretty good run-up. Obviously, pretty high volume on the way down. And this is what I get concerned about is these kind of breakdowns are high volume on it, uh, which a lot of times sets up the idea that the stock's going lower, Right. However, we're making new highs um, in the stock itself. This is way above this 114 is the highest, above the 110 uh, ceiling that it had uh, for a few months, and we're trading at 110.93. The DXY, again, we're talking about that, 103.62. Uh, 
Uh, it's continued its march down. If we can get that 99.57 area, that's what we're looking at. Uh, obviously, we'll be more off to the races, as Tom would say, um, at least that we have been in the recent past. QQQ is trading at 386.46. Google, 136.05. Meta, uh, sideways, 334. Disney. We're talking about them a little bit. They um, are actually expanding a lot of their parks, okay? So they've just opened up a Frozen-themed park in Hong Kong. What they've done essentially is put aside, they've allocated $60 billion over the next decade, okay? So $6 billion a year to kind of expand uh, their global presence and kind of develop more on the parks that they currently have. I mean, it's pretty solid. Uh, I had a friend from college, and he works at the Hong Kong Disney. He's an engineer. Um, I haven't spoken to him in a while, but uh, a few years ago when I was speaking with him, uh, they say people love it there and uh, continue to go. So they have a pretty big dominance on the global kind of scale. I think once everything kind of blows away, um, and, and to, in, a lot, in a lot of ways it actually has gone down, uh, the kind of news between um, the Florida governor and Disney. Uh, but I think uh, if we get rid of that, we can really kind of unleash this stock again and uh, maybe see the 100 level some point soon. Of course, all bag holders kind of wish that. Uh, had some phenomenal um, volume gapping up here and has just continued to climb higher on uh, some decent volume, at least on November 15th. So we'll see where we can kind of go with Disney going forward. Apple, 190.22, and the SPY trading at 451. Take a look at Microsoft quickly. So some decent volume here, a lot of volatility on it. Let's take a look at the last three days. We'll have to wait to see what this looks like on the open here. Um, all right, so what happened basically, right? There was kind of a board coup at OpenAI. So uh, Microsoft has invested a lot of money in OpenAI. Obviously, they use that technology uh, in their Bing searches as well. This is like a big driver for them. And uh, the, the details aren't exactly clear on what happened, uh, but Sam Altman was ousted. Uh, this led to uh, another board member leaving as well. They brought on the ex-CEO of Twitch as the interim CEO, which I find interesting, and I'm not really sure the logic behind that. Obviously, um, I forget the CEO's name. I'll, I'll take a look in a second. I, he has a very common name. But um, he led Twitch to be uh, the predominant streaming platform. Um, it makes a lot of money. There's a lot of deal partnerships uh, that go through Twitch. Uh, streamers can end up uh, making a pretty good living for themselves on it. And so I think as an interim, you know, CEO, uh, used to be CEO of a large tech company, wasn't a bad choice. Uh, however, right now, you're getting uh, one of the guys who had a hand, Ilya Sadvaka, uh, with OpenAI. He is now tweeting that he regrets ousting Sam Altman. We'll see what happens. Sam Altman basically was brought on by Microsoft for that. Uh, the ChatGPT's maker's former president, Greg Brockman, another one of the board members who left after this happened, uh, will join the team. Uh, this is from the Microsoft CEO. Obviously, this is huge for the company. The developments come less than a year after OpenAI kicked off the generative AI frenzy with the launch of viral chatbot ChatGPT and bagged Microsoft as an investor, among other big names. The ousting of co-founder Altman as CEO by the OpenAI board member on Friday was followed by efforts to reinstate him amid concerns that his departure could lead to a mass exodus of talent and hit an upcoming $86 billion share sale. That's, that's a valid concern. We'll talk a little bit more about this when we get back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Folks, this is Jacob Shoup. Good morning, market kickoff. Filling in for Tommy O'Brien. He will be back tomorrow. We're talking a little bit about the uh, OpenAI coup that happened this weekend. Uh, Microsoft picked up Brockman and Altman. Uh, I was talking a little bit before we came, right, that Ilya, Ilya Sutskever, he's the co-founder of OpenAI. Um, he now just signed a letter. This is, I guess, breaking. He just signed a letter with 500 employees saying um, that they're going to quit if Sam Altman doesn't return. Uh, but the thing is, is that they say that Elia was the one who basically convinced the board. I don't know. You know, the, even with uh, what you saw with FTX, these kind of weird tech startups, they, they always have the strangest uh, kind of politics on, on the back end. Um, we saw this a lot with Sam Bankman-Fried and um, his girlfriend or whatever she was and uh, their, other, their other coworker and just a lot of strange maneuvering uh, that, you know, you hear out of movies or like Russian military news or something. So very strange. We'll see what that kind of holds for uh, Microsoft. I'm sure Microsoft wouldn't necessarily mind if, if Altman goes back. You know, they've invested $10 billion into OpenAI. Uh, Microsoft has said that they're still going to stick around with OpenAI, even with the departure of Brockman uh, and Altman. It's hard to say if they would do that if you have um, Sutskever and the rest of the people. It's about 70% of the workforce signed uh, that letter just about 20 minutes ago. It's very strange. Uh, and some more news as well of CEOs quitting. Uh, this is Cruise CEO, right? Now, Cruise is a subsidiary of uh, GM. GM does, or Cruise essentially does these kind of self-driving cars. And these are going to be the ideas that you can uh, go ahead and call one and it'll drive you somewhere. We were looking a little bit uh, about that, I think about a month ago on when I was filling in for Tom, uh, how they were under some kind of uh, I, su I suppose there was an investigation because one of them had hit a pedestrian. Well, he's out, uh, and you always get a little bit nervous when all these CEOs start shifting everywhere. Um, local authorities have been very aggravated with this company uh, because it sometimes runs red lights, it uh, makes illegal turns, all this kind of stuff. But I think that what's important to understand, and again, it's easy to kind of, uh, you know, make fun of these companies or dog on them a little bit because it's something we're not familiar with, right? We're not used to. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of situations in the past with tech companies that they kind of make fools of themselves. Uh, but these are the kind of people who push society forward and, and push technology forward. And, uh, you know, the future could be very interesting with autonomous kind of taxis in this sense, right? I mean, this is essentially what Cruise is going to do is have autonomous taxis. 
you know, this helps people who are disabled. Um, it helps people who maybe can't afford a car so they can actually get to work and do these kind of things. Uh, so it's interesting. But he got fired recently. There's not a lot of information as to why uh, that occurred. But it's interesting news nonetheless. And we're seeing a lot of these uh, tech guys moving out. I know there was calls for the current CEO of X to leave as well. And she says she's not going to do that. All right. So let's talk a little bit about the Bitcoin ETF since we're on the tech news. Uh, SEC actually has delayed uh, the Bitcoin applications again, and Bitcoin has retraced. Maybe one second here. Trading at 36,998 for Bitcoin now. That's a lot better than the about 15,000 it was earlier. Yeah, on January 1st, we're trading at 16,625. So definitely a strong move up with that. Again, a lot of people are trying to get into Bitcoin currently. Uh, because of this hype, right? So they're going to make ETFs with uh, the actual crypto pegged to it. So the SEC has postponed approval for a spot Bitcoin ETF from Global X and Franklin Templeton, as well as an application from Hashdex earlier this week. These delays have become a recurring theme as the SEC remains cautious about approving Bitcoin ETFs due to concerns around, uh, excuse me, surrounding market manipulation. Anticipation for the potential approval of a Bitcoin ETF has long been held by market observers who believe it could result in a substantial influx of capital from Wall Street into the cryptocurrency market. Analysts from CryptoQuant suggest uh, that such approval could prove a $1 trillion boost in Bitcoin and other digital assets. I think you're already seeing that. I, I, there's definitely uh, sophisticated investors and institutional investors who um, have Bitcoin as kind of part of their portfolio. When you pull from the stock of people that a lot of these hedge funds are pulling from, right? I mean, you know, we're talking MIT, uh, Harvard, all these kind of schools. A lot of the stuff that they learn in there is, is so much about game theory, right? And that's what you have going on with Bitcoin. Uh, one of my friends who works for a DAO, I, you know, I speak with him pretty often. He said it's the same concept, right? I mean, they're not providing anything of like true value with the, the cryptocurrency uh, that his company produces, right? A lot of it is just about how can you get in, how can we hold the floor, and then how can we make money by shedding it off constantly, right? What the real transaction is when you're investing in some of these, okay, like, again, I, I like Ethereum. I don't hold in the Ethereum, but I think that there's, like, genuine applications of it, and I think um, that the CEO, the guy who's running the whole project, is intelligent and actually cares about the long-term application of not only the Ethereum blockchain, uh, but Ethereum coined as well. But you look at like ETF now that it's decentralized, uh, excuse me, Bitcoin, it's decentralized in the sense that like nobody is in charge of uh, essentially how much is released, uh, like, you know, quantity wise. Of course, there's a lot of people who own the uh, means of production regarding Bitcoin, which is really going to be, you know, these processors, the GPUs and electricity. But, you know, you get like a lot of these smaller coins. I mean, Doge is an example of it. Uh, there's ones called like Safe Moon, and and the trade-off that really exists there, right, is you have the guys who run basically the supply pool. Okay, they have access to the treasury. This is like a, this is like a new thing that a lot of the cryptos are doing is they'll have treasuries, right? And the idea is that a floor is consistently held. Okay, so nothing ever gets tanked and nothing ever gets quote unquote rug pulled, right? A rug pull is when uh, the owners of the company they're going to have a large uh, um, amount of the float. And they're just going to basically sell it off entirely. Uh, so it, it's what what essentially goes on is you get these kind of average people, you know, like you and I, and we want to get in. And, you know, if we're, you know, hip to the whole concept, we understand that these coins don't really do anything. The blockchain that it's it's using is not really going to do anything. But we're waiting for enough people to maybe buy this or think the same way as we do after we get in to come in and buy and just wait for it to sail off, right? And then we sell out, move on with our lives. This is essentially what the owners of these kind of coins do. And I'm talking about like the guys who run the project, but they need a, it's a little bit more complicated, right? Because they don't want to rug pull entirely and scare everyone. Of course, they want to maximize their profits as well. So, you know, it's a very nasty kind of game, um, but you know, you, you can learn this in college, right? Um, this is the concept of game theory you know, to like in the general sense. And this is kind of what I think is going on at larger hedge funds when they're investing in these kind of coins. Now, of course, Bitcoin's a little bit more stable, 
only because it has that name power. These smaller ones that are being played with, you know, I'm sure the larger guys don't touch them, uh, but this is kind of the nature in a general sense, right? So it's interesting. Um, I, I still think it's going to be a long way until you're going to get vast acceptance of the SEC to uh, kind of accept these applications because it is right. You know, uh, these things are kind of, you know, there's a risk that they get manipulated. Yeah, um, there's a lot of glaring issues regarding security with uh, the Bitcoin uh, kind of blockchain. Now, a lot of these newer forks have developed ways to uh, protect against that. Um, but still, at least with Bitcoin, you get just a bunch of whales who hold it. Nobody really knows who these guys are, and they can kind of just sell whenever it makes sense for them. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kickstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. All right, welcome back, folks. Sorry, I don't know what I kicked down there. Um, all right, so let's look at this. We have the market open right now. We have everything flat, basically, okay? The, um, the ES is down about 0.03%. We're flat on that. The Russell Futures, 0.03%. NQs, again, 0.12 here. So we have a flat market right now, okay? We have some big earnings, okay? N chiefly NVIDIA. We'll look at them in a second here. But we also have Lowe's, John Deere, Best Buy. I'm concerned with Lowe's in particular. Home... Home Depot had, uh, 
declining growth over the last quarter and they're, you know, th just the absolute juggernaut in that kind of um, segment. They also had shaky forecasts going forward. Uh, if, you know, if Lowe's doesn't pull out something big, they could go down uh, significantly here today. Uh, John Deere, Best Buy, and Zoom are also coming out. We'll take a look quickly at Zoom. Which surprisingly, you know, to me has so much staying power in it, I guess. It's at 63.37, we're very low for the year. You know, close to that 58.87, looking kind of like, let me see, we're on year to date. Yeah, the high of 85.13. Um, so they have earnings, apparently there's some thought that they're gonna do very well. Then we can take a look at the video. Okay, now, there's some issues regarding investors with NVIDIA. Okay, so we're at the high on the one year of 502.66. We are very close to that at 494. Obviously, we had that sell-off in the lowest being 390 around this area. The, the biggest fear that investors have, and it's not gonna be for this quarter, but it's going forward, is what it means, excuse me, what the, uh, what the ban in China means. So US chips or Western chips going into China, there's a ban on that, NVIDIA. Uh, over the past few quarters has actually been able to skirt that in a certain way. Well, that's, that's completely done now. Uh, so while their quarterly might be very good, or excuse me, their earnings report might be very good, I fear that the outlook going forward might not be the strongest. Uh, so that's something to take a look at uh, regarding that going forward. Again, this has been such an amazing kind of move, and this is really what drove, this, this is really the company that got the, the full benefit of this conversation around AI, and also it helped bring AI further as well, uh, kind of into general talking points. I mean, again, what a, what a phenomenal move, trading about 297.59 to a low here on the session of about 365.75 on significant volume. Quite the move, and uh, definitely historical to kind of see that. With these kind of AIs, I'm trying to find this article for you. This is about the US, and they're trying to push forward uh, something with AIs. If I can find it, uh, we can speak about it a little bit. Well, here, listen. In the meantime, while I find it, I'll find it on the next break. Uh, we can talk a little bit, since we were on the AI uh, talk as well for a little bit. Aha, here we go. Perfect, from Semaphore. This is a pretty good news uh, outlet as well. Uh, Inside Commerce's multi-billion dollar plan to build a domestic chip packaging industry, and this is really what's going forward. And guys, you know, Basil Chapman is up next. He looks at chips as kind of like a, uh, I don't want to speak for him, but as a general indicator for the rest of the market as well, which I think is super cool. Uh, you know, if you've ever read the book Dune, you know, chips to us is going to be like, you know, spice or melange uh, to them. This is like really going forward. This is going to be the massive thing to focus on. And national security really will hinge on whether or not your company, not only national security, but, but really success as well on the global stage, is going to hinge on chip producing and uh, innovation, essentially. If you're at the forefront of that, you're going to be a very powerful nation going forward. We're kind of bringing a lot of this back to the US, which is an interesting thing that the current administration is doing. So we'll look at this a little bit. So the Biden administration is about to kick off another key stage of its push to build up the US semiconductor industry. Early next year, the Commerce Department plans to begin fielding funding applications for research and development in advanced packaging, the process that stitches multiple chips together to make devices faster, cheaper, and more complex. The department's vision for the National Advanced Packaging Manufacturing Program, shared exclusively with Semaphore before its release, is the next big step in the administration in taking, uh, excuse me, that it's taking to implement the Chips and Science Act. The law provides $3 billion for research and development and advanced packaging. And as you know, American citizens, we should be really excited about that. Obviously, it's gonna bring jobs uh, to a lot of the nation, and it's gonna keep us going stronger uh, for longer. I think this is pretty neat. Uh, packaging advanced chips in the US uh, will both secure US supply chains, remove any security risks associated with sending chips overseas to be completed. Currently, most advanced packaging is concentrated in Asia, where Taiwan has dominated semiconductor production. And that's always blown my mind as well, Kind of, the, kind of the way that the supply chains work out. Uh, even during COVID, when it was, when it kind of came to the forefront that like something like 90% of our pharmaceuticals are made offshore. I think a lot of them were in like Puerto Rico. Uh, that just seems to me like not a very prudent thing to engage in. And especially when we're dealing with like tech, right? We send a lot of uh, tech obviously is made in Taiwan. We bring it over here. 
uh, but we were sending stuff over to China to be uh, built that had these kind of uh, is kind of technology and I always found that very interesting um, obviously you have like different advantages uh, you know regarding like economic theory but still I, I think that probably national security and uh, like integrity in US companies is a little bit more important than than that but it was we'll keep reading a little bit uh, packaging advanced ships in the US of course we run through that it kind of removes security risks and secures the supply chains currently most advanced packaging is concentrated in Asia or Taiwan uh, has dominated semi uh, conductor production. China has also been investing in advanced packaging techniques, but one estimate highlighted by Commerce, North America accounted for only 3% of global advanced packaging production as of 2021. So it's super interesting. I think what's also very cool as well as we bring this back, obviously a lot of innovation is still done over here and the production and you know this kind of cobbling together of a bunch of different chips is done overseas. Uh, but we're about to start seeing a bunch of different chips for everything, right? We have the GPU, we have the CPU, those split off about a decade ago, and now we're having the DPU. So you have all of these certain chips that are gonna do one function and computers will be uh, so significantly fast, right? There's a lot of the conversation around quantum computing, which is still something that I think should be kind of pursued, but it'll be just more at a nation state level. Um, but this, this way that they're kind of delegating the chips for, uh, you know, just a single task is increasing the amount of computation that's possible just with our, you know, general binary uh, computers, right? I think something it, they were trying to, what they, what they do to kind of test the computation is uh, they, they run it against hash algorithms to see if they can solve it, right? And what's, what's great about quantum computing, or, you know, let's start with the general computer, right? It, it just processes things in zeros and ones. It's either on or it's off, like very basic logic, right? Quantum computing can have that, you know, in traditional computing, you have one cell, and they'll either be on or off. In quantum computing, it can be both, right? Like, theoretically speaking, and that's how it works. And so ideally, it can solve a lot of these hash algorithms much quicker. Still, the technology is not there, or at least the, you know, the resources aren't there in quantum computing to make that really um, kind of viable on a, you know, on a day to day basis. But it just came out that with the kind of dividing of tasks of general um, chips, that normal computers are now able to beat quantum computers. Or let's say traditional computers are now able to beat quantum computers as it is now. I find that super interesting, and it's only going to get better in the consumer market as well, um, which I think is great. And when that spreads out to the rest of the world, everyone becomes a little bit more uh, equalized and people become a little bit uh, you know, better as a whole in the nation. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. NN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. 
the Chapman Way of Up-Down Sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tommy O'Brien. We have Basil Chapman up next. Steve Rhodes did the uh, did a show at 8 o'clock, so stay tuned for that. We'll be replaying that at the 11. Let's take a look here. Again, we are still pretty flat here. Uh, we're only about 12 minutes after the open, uh, so still plenty of time to go throughout the day. Uh, big thing I'm looking at here, dollar, that is still flat. We're trading at 103.54. Another massive leg down like we saw uh, November 14th would be uh, pretty wild, pretty good uh, if you are along the entire market. Uh, we were talking about, I think last week, a lot of the home builders uh, got huge boosts. I mean, we're talking like something like 8 to 12% uh, for a lot of the larger home builders. Uh, and this came on the back of, you know, pretty uh, consistent CPI, uh, no massive change from the period prior. And this kind of suggests that the Fed won't uh, raise interest rates anymore. We can talk about this, though. Uh, this is uh, the home builders are cutting prices by as much as 6% to offset mortgage costs since so many people don't want to invest, or excuse me, purchase a mortgage because rates are so high. If here, the U.S. home builders are slashing prices to offload unsold inventories of single family homes, uh, their latest desperate attempt to lure buyers back into the market. Here, I'll just throw up toll chart uh, while we're talking. That is not the right one. That is, I mean, look at, see, that's what I'm talking about that day right there. Massive volume gapping up. Uh, the National Association of Home Builders Housing Market Index fell by six points in November to 34. It's the lowest in almost a year. The index is down 22 points since July. Anything below 50 indicates more pessimism in the market, with lower readings signifying worsening conditions. A staggering 36% of home builders told the NAHB they cut home prices in November, with an average price reduction of about 6%. Meanwhile, six out of 10 builders provided some, excuse me, provided some type of buyer incentive, such as free upgrades, discounts, and paying for closing costs. Uh, these incentives carry an obvious financial burden for the builders who are sacrificing profit margins to boost sales. Now, this is a quote from the NAHB chair. It said, higher uh, short-term interest rates have increased the cost of financing for home builders and land developers, adding another headwind for housing supply in a market low on resale inventory. Now, we spoke last week as well about one of the um, Fed he heads essentially saying that uh, home ownership is, is kind of out of reach for a lot of Americans, right? So we do see some people uh, in the Fed who are looking at this in a serious way. And the idea of kind of alleviating some restrictions for home building uh, might be on the table as well. Obviously, the Fed can't really, you know, pass legislation like that. Uh, but it's still interesting to see, you know, some big heads talking about it, which I think is super important, right? Uh, new home sales rise. Uh, according to the latest available data from the Commerce Department, new home sales rebounded 12.3% in September to an annual rate of 759,000 units, uh, more than offsetting August's nearly 9% drop. This would be cool to ask Tom about. I might ask him about that a little bit later. I think he should be on 
uh, today. Uh, the price cuts are, quote, doing more than just grabbing buyers' attentions. They're making home ownership a reality for many who might have been left out in the cold given the current market conditions. That is very true. So, yeah, if we get a pullback in mortgage rates, you know, just in rates in general, obviously we can see a, a major takeoff uh, in, in home purchasing, right? But I, I think at this level, it's uh, pretty intolerable for, you know, I'd say a decent amount of the population, which I find interesting. But yeah, we can, we can see now that the effects of high interest rates, uh, excuse me, that they're having the intended effect, right? Which is kind of slowing purchasing, uh, which is really what the Fed intended, right? To kind of bring down costs a little bit, which I find neat. Uh, we're talking again some more about, uh, well, give me a second here, let me find a sticker, I always forget it. Okay, right, I thought so. Did I think so though, haha. <laughs> so Airbnb has purchased uh, an AI startup. This is for under $200 million, which is still a pretty significant investment, uh, but cool for the stock itself. Uh, Airbnb has made its first acquisition as a public company in a deal value just under $200 million. Sources familiar with uh, the deal told CNBC. The startup is called Game Planner AI, Game Planner AI, which has been in stealth mode that says, whatever that means, since its founding in 2020. Startups in, uh, quote, stealth mode operate out of the public eye for various reasons, such as to protect intellectual property or avoid distractions. Okay. It's code founded uh, by one of the founders of Siri, which is really neat. Okay, so what is the point of it, right? Um, what it's going to do is they're going to overlay it on their current application. And I find this pretty neat. And uh, given your past history and past behavior on the application, it'll start selecting um, different deals for you, uh, selects homes or you know whatever to stay at that it thinks you would like the most. Obviously, this increases engagement and may make people a little bit uh, more likely to book a trip that they wouldn't have prior, which is good for the economy in general, right? You get people spending. Uh, Airbnb is currently trading at 128.68. I find that again pretty interesting, and I like seeing the way that now. And we say AI, right? Uh, I'm not so. There's not a lot of information on GamePlanner.ai in general, but this is just kind of like pattern recognition, which has been around for quite a long time. And again, we're seeing uh, that same, I don't want to say abuse because it's not that, but that's consistent kind of overuse and stretching of the definition of AI. Yeah, naturally, I would, I would say a computer program that can analyze data and then kind of change its behavior uh, would be considered AI, but it's nothing like you know, what we're really talking about, which is generative AI uh, during the day, which I find uh, pretty neat. We can take a look here, talk about a bit about MasterCard. We only have a little bit left in the segment, uh, so we'll just kind of read through some stuff here. The MasterCard doubles down on efforts to detect and tackle, tackle crypto fraud with AI tie-up. Uh, the company told CNBC exclusively that it's partnered with FIDSA, which is a regulatory technology platform that aims to combat money laundering and financial scams online using artificial intelligence. You know, and guys, let me know too, uh, in the den, the next time I fill in, I'm not, I'm not sure when that will be, but I can always just kind of have it, you know, in the holster. Uh, if you guys want me to go through, you know, kind of what, we'll just start with Bitcoin, or like what that was trying to solve, right, with its blockchain, and then uh, issues that arrived with that, uh, such as different um, insecurities within the blockchain that left it open to exploitation, and then how other larger, you know, well-known uh, blockchains kind of solve that. If you want to do that, we can absolutely go through that. I'm, I'm really big in... Uh, to security in general. I think it's cool. I have some certifications in it. Um, and I just find that kind of like a neat pastime to kind of read through those kind of things. I think it might be a little bit um, kind of enlightening too, if you're not super familiar with really what uh, the blockchain is and what kind of issues it solves. I think that'd be pretty cool. Maybe I can throw up a video of it. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Let me know if you find that cool. You can send me an email at jacob at tfnn.com. You can message us in the den or you can put it in the YouTube uh, as well. And take a look here. Uh, through the partnership, uh, FedZ will integrate directly with MasterCard Cypher Trace, our Mata platform, which is used to help banks monitor transactions from over 6,000 crypto exchanges for fraud, money laundering, and other suspicious activity. This is pretty big because it can kind of sit uh, at that center point. You know, the SEC is concerned about a lot of fraud and manipulation. Um, and if this gets a little bit better and more advanced, you know, MasterCard could be posed uh, to kind of be, I could say, like that kind of gate that a lot of things pass through. 
Uh, this will increase fraud detection by protecting unwary customers. It uh, will also detect potential money laundering activity in Mule accounts. An estimated 40% of scam transactions exit directly from a bank account to a crypto exchange today. And this kind of scam is massive. You know, I get phishing emails all the time of like, hey, you don't want this, you know, you can sell me Bitcoin or something like this. It's, it's insane. Folks, stay tuned. We have a short segment uh, coming up next. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup for the Morning Market Kickoff. Filling in for Tommy O'Brien. He will be back with us tomorrow. We can take a look here, looking at American Airlines, trading at about 12.26 right now. Take a look here at United Airlines, about 39.59, kind of moving a little bit up on it. Why are we looking at this? Well, it's about to be Thanksgiving. It's about to be Christmas. Uh, these are massive times for these airlines to turn a profit. Uh, however, I think there's some issues we're going to come across here, right? The first glaring one. Okay, let's look what happened last time, right? Christmas. Uh, they had massive snowstorms everywhere. This halted uh, a ton of flights, and this really chewed into profit. Okay, I think currently we have a major shortage. I don't think I know there's a major shortage of air traffic controllers. Uh, this is going to cause a lot of mayhem, and I think at least canceled. Um, let's say uh, you know, kind of pause if not canceled flights. I mean, I remember going to like I went to um, I went up north a few months ago, and 
my my flight got delayed like three times for a total of like six hours. I mean, it was just miserable. And this is pretty common too, at least I know people who like travel a lot for work or whatever, uh, that this happens uh, somewhat frequently. Um, there's still a massive backlog on trying to get air traffic controllers into the company, excuse me, into the position. It, it takes a lot of education um, and it's just been causing issues. Uh, on top of this, what else is it? There's um, still need a bunch of people there, right? So paying for labor costs has been massive for these airlines. And then what we're really going to face, which I, I fear if um, something doesn't occur with the Israeli-Gaza conflict, right, that doesn't end, something doesn't resolve with it, I do think that OPEC will use that um, as a reason to kind of increase oil prices, right, or excuse me, decrease output, which will naturally increase oil prices. Um, there's a massive pressure on a lot of the countries in that area to do something to support Gaza, right? And so a lot of the leaders of OPEC had said, well, we're going to cut oil production if something's not done and something's not resolved soon. If that somehow cor corresponds, excuse me, coincides uh, with this time, uh, we might see a lot of these airlines does not really turn a, a massive profit at all. Folks, thank you so much for joining me. We have Basil Chapman up next. Really recommend checking him out. Uh, Steve Rhodes did his show at 8 o'clock, so he'll be on, excuse me, we'll be doing a replay at 11. Then we have Larry and then Tom O'Brien at 3 p.m. Thank you so much.